Welcome. So how do we simplify tri uh, trigonometric expressions and what is really going to be kind of the process that we're going to want to follow? Well, you know, very similar to what we learned when we first started doing like order of operations to simplify uh, numeric and algebraic expressions, we're going to be using a lot of those properties uh, to go through this. And to simplify trigonometric expressions, what we're going to want to do is take our complicated, ex complicated expression and simplify it to its, you know, simplest form. Usually trying to written out in either as a form as a number or in its simplest um, function of either, you know, one or two functions. Um, either you know combined or as or as least as one expression. So to do that, there's a lot of things that you're going to have to start looking into, and, and I want to kind of go through a couple main points uh, that I see in algebra that I want to make sure that students uh, you know remember as far as how we're going to apply them in our trigonometric uh, expressions. The first one is our reciprocal property. Um, you know, if we have x over y times one over x. Remember, we can rewrite that as x divided by y over x. Therefore, the x's are now going to divide to 1, and I'm just left with 1 over y. So it's very important, especially when we're looking into multiplying rational expressions, or we just have one rational expression, we always want to look for that opportunity to be able to divide out our trigonometric terms so they can equal 1. Um, this also comes up when we have maybe complex. So let's say if I had x divided by y divided by z. All right. So a lot of times what we want to do for this one is, again, look for our reciprocals. So if I have x divided by y divided by z, I can multiply this by 1 over z. Again, by multiplying this by my reciprocal, that go, divides to 1. And then I'm left with multiplying by the reciprocal and the denominator and the numerator, where my final answer would be x over y times z. All right, so those are some very important skills when dealing with uh, fractions and uh, your reciprocals. Um, but that's not the only take that we're going to be using for simplifying our trigonometric identities. Um, one thing we're also going to go through is factoring. You need to remember how to make sure you can factor the difference of two squares. Uh, make sure you can factor by using our AC method or just be able to factor you know, a regular trinomial when our coefficient of a equals 1. They're going to come up. We're going to want to go ahead and use them. And, and what we do is when we simplify or when we use our factoring, the main important thing about simply simplifying trigonometric ident uh, expressions is looking for the opportunity to use our identities. And again, the identities, which have you know, previously been given to you guys, have a reference sheet. Um, you're going to want to use those identities to substitute them into an equation. So therefore, you now produce maybe a fraction. So for instance, you know, if I had like tangent of theta um, times cosine of theta. Well, if I wanted to simplify this, I can use my quotient identity to say, all right, well, let's rewrite this. Let's get this into some fractions so maybe then I can simplify this out. So I can rewrite the tangent as sine of theta over cosine of theta times cosine of theta. Now I have a similar um, operation like I had over here, where now the cosines are going to divide out, and I'm just left with one trigonometric term of sine. So that's going to be very important when you're looking for these. You know, you're always going to want to be using, think about the main ones that I would like to say is your quotient, reciprocal or Pythagorean. Because I can give him the big P, because he's a big guy. All right, Those are going to be your main um, identities that you're going to be using. You're going to use co-function. You're going to use even and odd. Um, but those are going to be your main functions that almost on every single problem you're going to want to apply. And you're going to want to substitute. And the great thing about simplifying expressions is it's all about just trying. You know, see how far you can get. Try something. Um, and if it doesn't work out, try maybe substituting in a different identity and see where it's at. There's, there's not always great right or wrong answers. But one thing I do want to talk about for you to look for when you're doing, when you're simplifying your trigonometric identities is looking for these terms of sine squared of x, cosine squared of x, or tangent squared of x. All right? When you see any one of these trigonometric terms, what I always think are actually even their um, reciprocal identities. All right, there's not a lot that we use with these true identities um, in when simplifying trigonometric equation, expression. So whenever I see any of these terms squared, I automatically think I'm going to try to replace it with the Pythagorean identity. Now, not always is that the best solution or the best thing to do. 
But a lot of the times that is going to get something moving where you're going to be able to finally simplify your expression. You're finally going to get maybe um, the same terms on the numerator and denominator that you can divide out. So look for those opportunities um, for when you have you know, these, uh, these functions that are squared, look to try to apply your Pythagorean identities to substitute in those values. Um, also, try looking for opportunities to create um, a sine squared, cosine squared, and so forth. For instance, if I have like 1 over cosine of theta minus 1, well, if I go ahead and simplify this, you know, I don't know, let's do sine or something. I'm just totally making something up. But there's right now, there's really nothing I can do to kind of simplify that. However, if I go ahead and multiply my denominator by cosine of theta plus 1, now what I've created in my denominator is cosine squared minus 1. And we know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. That is your trigonometric expression, right? So now, by go ahead and rewriting this, I can now replace this in my denominator, because I have sine of theta times cosine of theta plus 1. I can now rewrite cosine of negative 1 as negative sine squared of theta. Now, how that's going to affect the rest of that problem, um, you know, we, I, can, I just kind of made that up, for instance. Um, but then you'd be able to delete out a sine. Then you'd have a, sine, a cosine over sine, which you can convert to a tangent. And then you might possibly have a trigonometric identity in terms of tangent or cotangent. So you just got to start looking at the box. And you know, I would just say, in general, when looking through these problems, is just going to start trying things. Try it. See how far you can get. Make sure you're applying your identities, because that's pretty much what we're going to do, is applying your identities and your algebraic processes. If you see an opportunity to add or, or to add, you got to get common denominators, right? That was actually another one. If I have 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, to add those, we've got to make sure we have common denominators. So I'll multiply by 3 over 3 and 2 over 2. Then I can now add this as 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6. All right. So when you're looking at adding, make sure you remember those algebraic processes. Take advantage of your opportunities of multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting, especially factoring, and as well as you know, trying, to, trying to get to your Pythagorean identities so you can replace them and then simplify. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that helped you for how do you simplify your trigonometric expressions. Thanks.